Tajikistan is one of the most migration dependent countries in the world. Um, between 1.3 and 2 million citizens live outside of the country, primarily in Russia, and migration makes about 60% of the economy. So it's been mostly uh, in migration that we've seen the recruitment take place. Migrants in Russia are marginalized, many of them living undocumented, they face corruption, a lot of xenophobia, um, and that, of course, and they live in very harsh conditions, which, of course, makes them, uh, makes the appeal of these terrorist organizations who can offer an alternative, an alternative life, an alternative community more appealing. It generates certain grievances against uh, countries like Russia um, that are framed as being you know, infidel states that are holding Muslim populations in slavery. So a lot of their messaging in the Tajik language is specifically addressing the concerns of migrants against uh, Russia and against their life in Russia, uh, against the government of Imam Ali Rahman, the president of Tajikistan, who's ruled the country since 1992, and some of his uh, corrupt policies and authoritarian governance. Countering violent extremism, as in other places like Russia, has become mixed with efforts to uh, crack down on various opposition groups, journalists, uh, human rights activists, the main opposition party in the, in the country that held two seats in parliament up until 2015, the Islamic Renaissance Party was banned because it was declared a terrorist organization. So I think you know their approach has been very much repressive. There's a lot of fear as to what the repercussions will be for the large Tajik community in Russia. There's already a lot of reports circulating of, of uh, of uh, attacks, uh, violence against Tajik, Tajik, Tajik community in the country, some attacks on businesses, people saying they won't use uh, taxis if they're driven by Tajik. And so I think for society, the main concern is uh, the safety of the Tajik community in Russia.